Probably into the couple second. years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say into the First second. Two years. It just depends on whether you're calling or not about stalls. Well, and it's also depends on what the stall looks like. Like, is the stall like a six month stall? Oh, fair. Because if the, it is, then I mean, I would call. I, I didn't have more than like a cup, like a week of a stall. Yeah. So I didn't have to call for that. But that might be something because that you would a want stall to find is out. More than two weeks to a month. Yes. Yeah. So you didn't stall at all. Yep. Yep. I just went straight through. Went straight through. <laughs> went straight down to the bottom and then went, went straight back, back up. up at the top. And, and then you now went back. I'm a little bit down. Well, I'm a lot, no, of, you're it a down. lot of it I'm, down. I'm over 50% of, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's wild. Of my regain. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. That includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to continue to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and, and consult, consult your doctors. doctors. We all need our vitamins after surgery, regardless of what you think. Yes. It's a must. Yes. So why not choose the easiest and the best tasting in the community? Seriously, it's pro care, guys. Pro care yeah. is so delicious. I use their chewable for over a year. Yes. That's how and I know. I, yes. And I love their capsules. Yes. Love them. They're yes. once a day. I take them at night. Easy peasy. And my labs are fantastic yeah our labs are great and i've actually switched to the capsules and i take those at night now so yes. if you guys need your iron they have them with iron and they have them iron free they even have calcium chews yes the calcium chews mm, perfect they have mocktail ones cal uh, chocolate they have also some caramel and a cinnamon roll. They're freaking delicious. So go over to ProCareNow.com and use our code OSLP to save some money. Guys, how do you get better prepared for your weight loss journey? Duh, by getting all the guesswork out of your portion control. And Uba does that for you. They make portion control products like plates, bowls, portion containers, and even flatware. And they're porcelain which means that they are oven, dishwasher, and microwave safe. No plastic. Yeah. So go get your Uba containers now. My goodness. So you can either go to our link in our bio, or you can just go over to their website. It is ubahome.co. And that is uba, U-B-A, home.co. And use OSLP for, for a discount. All know how difficult post-op life can be. Yeah, it's pretty freaking hard, guys. Yes. And so a way to make it a little bit easier is by joining the Tribe Membership Program. It has been created by a registered dietitian. She's actually the sleeve dietitian on Instagram. Her name is Jamie. And she's created this whole membership program just to support us. Yeah, like we've one, we've had her on the podcast. We love her to freaking death. And then two, like she has full experts in their field that help you. And they've had bariatric surgery, almost every one of them. Yes. And the, diet, the sleep dietitian is freaking smart because she has almost a support group every single day, guys. Yes. You're going to get an email. It's going to tell you which ones are for today. And you can just sign up and hang out with people that are just like you. Mm -hmm. And I've even used the journal prompts. I'm into journaling. And that was way helpful to just go somewhere that can help you and just get your mind going. Yes. So if you need this kind of support, which a lot of us do, mm -hmm. go to her website and use our code OSLP at checkout to get your discount. Welcome back, OSLP family. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleeve Life podcast. And this is Kelly. This is Moho. And tickets are on sale. Yes, tickets. For the Just Be You Bariatric Award Show. That's so right. Go over there, stat to get your tickets because, oh my God. This is literally like warming up to be the best thing ever. Yeah. It really is. In our opinion. In our opinion. <laughs> you know, because we're planning. We the whole might thing. be a little biased. We're a little biased. The things that are coming out of our our uh, copywriter's fucking brain is wild. Yes. And I love it. I love her for it. So. Yes. We have so much planned. It's a whole weekend. Um, the show is on Saturday night, September 30th. Yes. 2023 <laughs> and uh obviously and uh we're excited it's going to be in washington dc this and year where where is the at venue? the howard theater yeah. where miss aretha franklin has played can you believe it we're gonna be the same stage yeah oh, oh and you God. guys could be too that's right 
You can be in the same building. You There's so many artists that have been there. Mm-hmm. I'm so stoked because it's it's two stories. It has two bars. It has booth seating on front and top. The front and top? Yeah, the top bottom and, and top. Top and bottom. Yep. Bottom and top. First and, then, and second floor. That's right. On the second floor, there is even booths that you can purchase. They might be sold up by now. You, we don't know. Yeah. But if they're not, go get them because you can actually get like a four top or a six top. And then there's going to be little QR codes on your table. You scan that bad boy and then you get table service. And you can tell that is Mel's favorite part. Uh, because I like she brings service. it up. Every single time it is. Um, but you also have to purchase those in four or six tickets at That's one right. time. So you know. get your berry besties together, plan a weekend. That's right. Bimmo each other, get it mm. in one bucket, you know. One bucket. That's right. I'm the accountant over here. You get it all in the PayPal account, on the Venmo, the Cash App. Make your purchase. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so there's so much fun things planned for the weekend. We're going to have a free event on Thursday night. We're going to have some other things that we will um, tell you all about later right. on we'll Friday be- morning and Saturday morning. Um, and then Saturday night, of course, is the show. And then Sunday is our famous which I'm considering it famous, Benji Brunch, where our members of our Facebook support group, which we call Benchies, uh, get to come and have brunch and we get to hang out and just have some fun. And how do they become a Benchie if they want to be a part of this free Benchy brunch on you a rooftop? just go to patreon.com forward slash OSLP and you pick the Benchy tier or higher and then you get to come. That's right. Yeah. You are invited to come to you actually if you couldn't show up on the at the show day, which sad day if you couldn't do that. Yes. But yes. you could technically just show up for the patron the patron benchy meetup. One hundred percent you could. So yeah. that's and pretty that, cool. That is also linked below. It is. So you can just scroll down and click on that and go right over and become a patron that's, of ours. Yeah. And if you want a freeway. Where are they Free going way to support us? Go to YouTube. YouTube. It is preloaded on your phone. You just click, click the app, put in our sleep life <laughs> podcast, and then hit subscribe, hit the little bit, little bitty bell so that you get notified for future videos. Like, yeah, this. like this, because this isn't just me and you. This is just me and no. Well, there's Yay! no one with us. I mean, we love our guests, but every now and then it's kind of nice just to have some conversation. Well, and I feel like I can be like 100 percent goofy with you. So, oh, well, I'm kind of used to your <laughs> you're used to my goofiness and I mean, there's sometimes that i'm like oh god <laughs> <laughs> what the hell but with professionals i can't be 100 percent that yeah some of them you can so jamie you can jamie yes because i get real goofy with her yeah yeah well she's we've also done disney together so you've yeah, seen once our goofy you've shared side. an airbnb with someone you're good to go yeah you're good pretty to much go. pretty much goofiness so, all the time today's episode yes We are going to talk about the top things not to do. Not to do. Before you get weight loss surgery. Yes. Didn't I, you know, as funny as that Kelly brought this to me and I was like, things not to do. Like, what would you not do before? And there was actually a good list. There's a really good list. Yeah. So what are we going to start off with? What is the first one? There is a list. Okay. Actually, I know what the first one is. So number one is one of the biggest things that we talk about in this community. It's the thing we've been fighting the most. Is don't assume weight loss surgery is the easy way out. Yes. It is not easy. It It is is not not. easy. Because we've met people in the community that even on the tummy tails, it literally said they thought it was the easy way out Mm -hmm. as as well until they got Mm -hmm. into it. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Big deal, guys. Because we're breaking that stigma within our community and for other people in this universe, Mm -hmm. but then we're also breaking it for people that go into this thinking it's easy. And then when they come out the other side, it's like, Oh no, that's actually really hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Really fucking hard. Yes. Really fucking (gasps) all day hardness. (laughs) No, That's what she said. Perfect. I just have to. Oh, that was good. Okay. I think it's totally fine. Okay. Good job. So, um, yeah. So just don't assume that it's easy just because it is, in our society considered a shortcut or an easy way out. Um, It is not. 
So wrap your head around that first. I know it's like it's like if I, it's literally like liar liar, the red pen blue pen situation. I've never seen that movie. I'm I not, thought you have. No, I am not. Cody oh. used to like that movie. Oh, okay. So I thought you were about to say you're not a Jim Carrey fan, and I was about to scream. No, I like Jim Carrey to a point because he's my fucking favorite. Well, one of them. Like I have never seen The Mask. I've never seen. It's like mm. Adam Sandler for me, like his early stuff. I just can't. I just can't. I understand why people can't with Adam Sandler, because I'm one of those people. I've never heard someone say that to Jim Carrey. It's it, I've never seen Ace Ventura. I've never seen The Mask. I've never seen well, that's because Liar, you lived Liar. In, a last, uh, in a household that you guys didn't really watch those movies. No, my mom was not allowing yeah. us to watch those so that's, movies. That's, that's, I will give you that then for those. You have a pass. But it's like Liar Liar where they fight over the red and blue pen. And just because you say it's red, but it's really blue doesn't make it anything else. But it being blue. Yes. So it's the same fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. I have no idea what you're talking about. I know. I lost it. It's fine. Okay. It's, it's fine. okay. Uh, uh, being the easy way out. Never mind. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, so the second one is one that we have said many a times on this podcast. Dun, dun, dun. Do not hire the first bariatric surgeon you see. Yes. Because we both did that mm -hmm. only because we did not realize that you could. Yeah, this time around, I would at least talk to three. I think three is a good amount of yeah. surgeons. I it's mean... There are parts of this country or parts of different states where maybe there's only one. Yeah, that's very, very possible. Yeah. A lot of places. Like and if that's the case, I mean, just do your research. Right. You know, because you never know. Maybe that this means you might need to go to EOC. We all know EOC is good. EOC is amazing. Yeah. So like, if you can't find one that's good near you, then mm -hmm. I can go somewhere else. Yeah, I think I agree. Yeah. I concur. You concur. Because yeah. I think like you treat it like you're a house. You're taking care of your house. So typically they tell you to get three bids. Oh, do they? Mm hmm. Oh, they want you to find what the average one is. Oh. So like when I wanted some of the painting done here, I'm glad I got three bids because they were all over the place. Yeah. It was like a 3000 bid. Then it was a 2000 and then it was an 800. And I'm like. Sold. Sold for eight because and I don't know why. he did a great job for $800. He did. He you even can... did extra work. That's, that was nice. So, like, I gave him a 1000 Oh, yeah. That that's sense. what I budgeted for. Was a 1000 It was, like, a 1000 Oh, okay. Because I didn't have a lot to do, but it was, yeah. like, hard stuff to do. Yeah, it's just stuff you didn't want to do. Yeah, it's, I would fuck it up. Yeah. Yeah. So would I. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw our painting job in here, so. <laughs> I can still see, see it on the ceiling because I'm, like, I know. It's great. Zach walks in. So do you have a process to what you're doing? Nope. No. Nope. Just painting. The paint is going to go on that wall. And I'm going to use this. Brush. Hey, we did a great job on this wall. We did. We This wall attention. was really good. Yeah. It, the other walls, not so much. I mean, they're white. So we really they're didn't fine. care. They're fine. Yeah. We just didn't do the ceiling again because who the fuck cares? It's a ceiling. I know. And it's our studio. We do what we want. Do what I want. We do what I want. So that's why you need to check on your surgeons because you just don't know. You just don't know. Yeah. We had no idea. I am very lucky. I lucked out with a great surgeon. You lucked, lucked out with out. a great surgeon. But there are quite a few different ones that mm -hmm. we didn't even realize they were in like an hour drive well, at the most. I was trying to remember. I believe someone that lived in Georgia had one and they she said that they were just horrible they don't return calls mm -hmm. um she have concerns and they wouldn't respond to them mm -hmm. like they do exist unfortunately unfortunately yes there are some out there's there. there's always bad apples though yeah always. but we really try to find the ones that are good too so mm -hmm. so what do you think they should look into for a surgeon so when they're you know talking to surgeons number one thing for me is still aftercare Okay. How do they handle their aftercare? Okay. Now, and then another big question, because one thing I didn't like about my office, and I love you, Ellen. I love you, Dr. Thompson. Um, and I had a fucking fabulous therapist when I was going through pre-op. Mm -hmm. But then she had to leave because her, like, 
thing there was done. Like she did, was doing like an internship thing. Okay. And so she, there's like several different levels that you have to do. So she was moving on to her next one. And I absolutely loved her. I was heartbroken when she left because that I wanted sense. to keep seeing her. Yeah. It's hard when you like have a, built this rapport with someone mm -hmm. and then now they go and they have to restart. Yeah. But it was my last appointment. Mm -hmm. And when she left, it was my last appointment with her, like with her and like for my six month thing. Oh, gotcha. So they like made it go out. Yeah. So after after I think I was like a year maybe and I was really tr like hard to figure out, wrap my brain around maintenance mode. Okay. It was really hard for me. And so I called them and I was like, hey, can I make an appointment with the therapist there? Because I, I'm kind of having like these blocks with this area. Made an appointment, went in. This guy was awful. Awful. First off, he walks in and he was just, he just looked. Meh. I didn't <laughs> like his face. And then I talked with him and his answer was, well, you should probably go find another therapist to talk to. Oh. That was his answer for me. And so I mean, he wasn't wrong. I mean, he wasn't wrong because he sucked. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, like, OK, well, what do I do now? Like, he didn't give me any like tips. He oh, didn't give shit. me anything to work no with. Help, no resources. It was basically like I drove 45 minutes for him to be like, well, you should go find another therapist. OK, well, thank you for that. Thanks for that. Okay. So then um, shortly after that, I uh, my husband left me and I went on. Uh, I can handle everything by myself and then gain 65 pounds back. Yep. So I would definitely recommend check in about how they handle your aftercare, not just like right after surgery, but like dietitian therapy. Like what if you have questions? What if it's midnight and something's happening like who do i contact i think those are all really good questions and to see what their like returning return emails return phone mm -hmm. calls what their schedule looks like like yeah. is it like an hour is it like yeah, if they, i email you one day like give me 24 hours to get back right, to you like right. what's the rate on that because most of our questions is like we're panicking mm-hmm so you want to know that they have your best interest at well, heart. Well, you want to know which avenue is the quickest. Mm -hmm. Like, is it an email or is it a phone call? Mm -hmm. Like, what are we doing here? Exactly. Like, because I, I know as a patient, I would want to know that right away. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, like, I didn't, I had no idea. That you could even do that. I didn't know I could even email them. Yeah. No clue. Yeah. So, and, like, I know the main number, but I never knew what to call on. Like, I'd had pains and things that would, like, you know suck feel I funky feel funky i yeah. told eric for a while that i could feel my organs move which made sense once yeah. once i realized what surgery i had yeah but like i it felt really weird you think i would have called it didn't even dawn on me okay but i uh, so let's go back to your family history though oh fair then no one calls that's why i just thought that i would I think now I would. Now you would. Now because I you would. would know. But yeah, like back then, like, like I was just like, oh, this is probably normal. Oh, this is this hurts for a week. Is that OK? Like, good thing even... you didn't die, Mel. I know. That's what I, <laughs> I didn't. I went to my one month. She said I was fine. Oh, my God. You know, I did all my check ins. That's also like very important. Like, yeah. What are the check ins? What like? are the check ins? Because we hear some people. It's just one time after. And we're like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah, no. And you should be. I mean, in my opinion, you should be seeing. A week after, one month, three month, six month, nine month. Oh yeah, I did the week after. That's right. Yeah, to you, make sure there's no leaks. Yeah, yeah. So I, in my opinion, you should be seeing them on those dates. I think so. Because that's when they check your blood too. Mm -hmm. I for the first year I had my blood checked not at the one week. No, I did have it at the one week. It was one week, one month. Yep. Three months, six, six months, month, nine months, month, and a year. A year. Yep. And, and then every year after that. And that's the thing they need to tell you what that looks like. So mm -hmm. this is a question you should definitely be asking that team, I mm -hmm. think, because um, my brother, which you guys know, he's been on the tummy tails. He does not do anything he's supposed to do either. Lord almighty. Um, you and and he, he hasn't gone to any of his check ins. Oh, my still. God. Matthew. Still. Yeah. What the fuck's wrong with him? And he's like, him? they should have called me. And I'm like, how do you know that they didn't really that's call you? Their, that's not their responsibility, though. Yeah. Like. 
they told you this is the time frames you you should go call and make all those appointments. And in actuality, when I before I even had surgery, they already had those appointments set up. Yeah, for me. mine were too. So I don't. I think he had them in Kansas. I them. think that I he's call a liar, my liar pants on fire. Yes. Matthew, he just doesn't want to go. That's I bet you 100%. they called and they called for the reminder, and I uh-huh. bet that he called and was like, "Cancel all my appointments." Oh yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> Well, yeah, again, like, no, I'm not doing that. He's your brother. I know. And that's where you came from. I know. No, I mean, not, not from your brother. That, but that would be weird. But um, that same family mm-hmm. dynamic of, oh, I don't need to call the doctor. What What's are they going to do? Yeah. What are they going to do? Just I, rub I, some dirt on it. I very much like I'm guessing that's probably what you said to yourself when those things happen. What is the doctor going to do? Yeah. Um, Save your life if you're dying. Save your life. Yeah, because I was like, no, my my one thing for all medical is like, do I have a fever? So if I didn't have a fever, oh I would. God, Mel, <laughs> you're so lucky you've made it to 36. I know. <laughs> my leg's broken. <laughs> No fever. We're no good. Fever, we're we're fine. good. We're fine. Walk I mean, it off. I'm gonna walk it off. When I did go to the hospital because I did break a leg before, we did call because my whole leg swelled up. <laughs> we're like. Mah! It was huge and red. How long after? <laughs> right after. Okay, thank it God. Was, there was no delay on okay, that because I screamed God. the loudest I've ever screamed in my well, life. Well, yeah, you spiral fractured your leg. I did, guys, from knee down. Yeah. Yeah, I got five screws in my ankle, two screws in my knee. Oh, my God. It felt great. The things I learn about you. I know. Um, What would you say for them to ask? For, to ask the surgeon? Mm-hmm. I would ask them, um, what are... What are the other people that I need to see in this office? Because there was a dietitian there. There was someone that helped you with exercise, but they didn't really like feed that to you. Okay. You just did that through the one spin through mm-hmm. and that was it. But but they tell you if you want, I if you just got to call and email us and you can. Da, 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 da. But like once you're out, like you forget about all those things. Like okay. All, like I didn't okay. have, they didn't have a follow dietitian with me. Okay. So like I would have had like, I guess maybe Matt might be a little bit right about this because yeah, they did say if I have any questions or if I want to meet up with the other people that aren't the surgeons, I would have to initiate those. And I don't think that's cool. Well, I mean, that's how I, it was at, with my office okay. after, like I had to initiate the call with Ellen, I think all pre oppers the like when your first month or whatever, once you're done with your surgery, they should call like there should be a designated person that calls all the new patients and gets them all scheduled for all the things for all the things. At least the first at least the first round out outside of post op. Oh, I thought of another question you can ask for your Ooh. office. Do they have an in body scanner? Oh, yes, because we're loving those. Loving those. And especially like with SABP, mm-hmm. you can do he does one before you have surgery and then what, three months? I think it's six months. After. Six months after. Yeah. So that really shows you like if you're in a that stall mm-hmm. type of area, then it'll show you like, oh, wait, you've lost this so and this much. and this and this, mm-hmm. but maybe not so much in the weight wise, Correct. but your body overall is looking, but is, be, is healthier. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, you've actually lost the percentage of fat mm-hmm. and then you've gained this lean muscle mm-hmm. and now you have more water. Like mm-hmm. it'll actually show it to you. Yeah, so exactly. You don't have to just be like, I'm mad at myself because the scale hasn't moved. Yeah. So. Well, and I think that's something else that you can bring the, to the attention. Like if I do have a stall. What who can I talk to about that mm-hmm. in the office? And is that something that I can just email? Is that something because that is a huge concern with most people, most people post. Yeah. Especially for the first year. Yeah. Prepping and measuring your food post-op is a beast all in itself. But Portion Perfection has actually made it super, super simple. They have bowls, plates and even a lunch bag called the Kitten Carry where you can have all of the system ready to go. Yeah, we love carrying that thing around with Mm -hmm. us. It's so much easier to pack your lunch, your snacks, especially when you're on a road trip. That Mm -hmm. thing is a lifesaver. Yes. If you want to get these things to help your journey, just go over to portionperfection.com and use our code 15 OSL pod. And again, that's 15 OSL pod. And you can also go over to our Amazon storefront to pick out any of those that you would like to use. 
We found a company that was founded by a bariatric surgeon for his patients. Mm -hmm. He is just trying to make their lives easier. And so they have created a whole array of snacks and dinners and just all the foods you could possibly want that have protein in them and are delicious. Yeah. And they're so freaking good that we took them on tour with us because we tried them on a live. So you guys can always go back and watch that. Mm -hmm. And we liked every single bar. We were shocked. We don't want you guys to miss out. So go over to berrylife.com, use OSLP and get your discount. While we were in Florida, we got to visit one of our favorite bariatric surgeons, Dr. Donald Fridley at Surgical Associates of Bayonet Point. And when we say that they are patient focused, they are patient freaking focused. They tailor make all their plans to the unique needs of each patient. It's an in-body scanner. We both got to use it. We both got to use it. And you get to do it pre-op and post-op. So that way you can see all the differences and all the changes that happen. And he's also one of the surgeons that does his surgery with robotics. And we got to play with that We did. So we were so so excited. And we want you to have such a special care that they give. So go over to sabpweightloss.com right now. Or give their office a call at 727-819-819. 9107. That's right. So, and tell them that the OSLP girls sent you and they're going to take great care of you. Yeah. Probably into the Couple second years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say into the First second. Two years. It just depends on whether you're calling or not about stalls. Well, and it also depends on what the stall looks like. Like, is the stall like a six month stall? Oh, fair. Because if the, it is, then I mean, I would call. I, I didn't have more than like a cup, like a week of a stall. Yeah. So I didn't have to call for that, but that might be something because that you would want to find out. A stall is more than two weeks to a month. Yes. Yeah. So you didn't stall at all. Yep. Yep. I just went straight through. Went straight through. <laughs> went straight down to the bottom and then went, went straight back, back up. up at the top. And, and then you now went I'm a little bit down. Well, I'm a lot no, of bit down. A lot of down. I'm, I'm over 50% of, yeah. Yeah. Like it's wild. Of my regain. So. Okay. The other question that I just thought of, speaking of how I lost my regain, mm-hmm. is do they offer weight loss prescri- or weight loss medications Correct. after you've had surgery? Yeah. Because that's a good thing to ask is do they do injectables? Is it only pills? Yeah. Is it what do they offer as far as weight loss medications? Because we are learning that you can have weight loss surgery. Mm-hmm. And still need a little bit of extra umph. Correct. Especially, I, I, I feel like it's a lot of VSG that needs the help. What made you say that? Because I feel like everybody that I'm seeing that's taking like Manjaro, Wagovi, Ozempic is all like VSG patients. Oh. And I think it's because it has a less amount of weight loss versus I was like bypass. Say, that's what I was going to say. Cause, okay. Yeah. Cause me and you even said, if we went backwards, we would do the oh, R and Y. I would have done the bypass. Because yeah. And we would have lost, we would have, we would have well, hit our goal. I hit my goal. Yeah. I probably would have hit my goal. Yeah. Weight if I did the R and Y. I feel like you so. definitely should have done, mm-hmm. but I also think that you like where you're at. I do. So I do. I, I love mean, it. And things happen for a reason. Exactly. So and my body was meant to be around this size. Yes, I you think know. so. I mean, you look great. Okay. So, and I feel good. Um, so the other thing is, is don't plan for perfection. Because there is no such thing. There is no such thing there, as perfection. No. And uh, none of us are perfect. No. You will. I'm sorry. will never be a perfect bariatric well, patient we because even, the perfect bariatric patient does not exist. Well, we weren't even born perfect. No, so why we're we, all like, so why are we trying to be something we weren't even made to be? Well, because I think here's my, here's my two cents. When you start looking into weight loss surgery, you go onto social media, you probably found us, which welcome here. Welcome, we are, welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, we are. But then you start go- deep diving if you're anything like me and you start going down the rabbit hole of all these patients and like seeing how much they've lost and seeing, Oh wow. They get their protein. They get their Mm -hmm. water. Like they're doing all the right things, but you don't social media is just that social media. You don't see a hundred percent. No, like Mm -mm. it's, it's not, things are not perfect all the time and they're never going to be. 
So as long as you plan for no, that, I think people misjudge what like a good moment is versus perfection. Mm, because that's a good one, right? Because like when we're taking photos, we're taking photos and posting these moments in our life that we are proud about or excited about, or excited yeah. about and happy about. But that doesn't mean that's what your life is every single minute of the day. It's just like mm-hmm. this is just a capture of this. Yes. So it's like, hey, like you're you can't be perfect because. A, Again, it doesn't exist in two. We're only showing you the happy. Like most people only show happy moments. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why me and Kel do what we do, because we won't. We we show you all of it. We show you all of it. We show you when we're down, Mm -hmm. like fucking crying, fucking looking rough. But, you know, I mean, I'm not even wearing makeup today. Yeah. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. I wash my hair. That's all you get. Right. That's That's all you get. I'm just happy she doesn't smell. I do not smell. I Mm -mm. showered, washed my hair. You know, I don't think out of these 23 years I've known you that you've ever smelled. I try like, not to. to me, like where I'm like, mm. yeah, I try not Girlfriend. to. You're raunchy. Mm-mm. But no, not at all. No, I hardly ever go two days without showering. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely put on deodorant every day and brush my teeth and do all of the things that make me good hygiene. Good I love hygiene it. People. Thank you for making sure my nose doesn't hurt when I'm around you. It works. It's very weird how okay. I said that, but yeah, it was uh, <laughs> very odd. But weird, I'm my gonna... brother called. Oh, okay. He didn't message anything. So, okay. So, you know, when the family members call, you're like, hmm. But if you don't leave a message, everything's okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the next one is so you are going to lose weight after. Yeah. So guaranteed. Un- unless you're like you have a goal that you have to meet for insurance requirement. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't stress out about the before weight. What do you mean? If What's it was the- me. So like losing weight prior to surgery. Oh. Because some people go like ham on trying to lose as much weight before surgery. Honestly, I would just focus on getting the habits down. Oh, 100%. Like, don't focus on the losing the weight Mm -hmm. or anything else. Like, just focus on getting the habits done and also focus on therapy. Yeah, because that's actually what's going to make you more successful long term. Correct. Like, if you focus on what Kelly's saying to do, like, you you will maintain. Oh, hands down. Yeah. And don't worry. uh, If you ever think you're not going to lose weight, it's like it's physically impossible. It's physically not. impossible. Yeah. So no matter what, you're going to lose something. Yeah. So, yeah, like I like the way that Kelly put that. If you don't have a requirement for insurance. Yes. Yes. You know, don't bust your balls if you're not losing a bunch of weight. Correct. Like, just yeah. focus on the habits. Protein first, protein most. Get all your water in. Mm-hmm. take your vitamins, get your sleep and mm-hmm. get movement in just do those five things in the day mm-hmm. and you'll be successful and you'll you might just see that you're going to slowly lose weight it doesn't have yeah. to be like fucking 20 pounds that month but yeah. if you lost like 10 cool if you lost five even better like yeah. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you lose prior. as long as you're losing well and well, i don't no, even I think prior, you, you don't even I have mean, to lose prior, i gained <laughs> yeah i mean we neither of us had it was it five pounds what did i gain i don't know I, I think I lost some weight, maybe. Yeah, I, I gained like I five remember. pounds or five to ten pounds. I should ask Dr. Thompson because I don't remember. You can pull it on my chart. I found my old records. Oh, did you? Dude, my vitamin D was bad. It was a three. What is it? Normal. It's like in the, it's supposed to be in like the 30s or 40s. Yeah. No wonder why I felt tired and sluggish all the time. <laughs> I mean. Besides the weight, my yeah. vitamins were fucked. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would just focus on your habits. Focus on like getting those that mindset down. Focus on therapy mm-hmm. because I don't care who you are. When you're having surgery, you have to start therapy. You yeah. have to. And I know it's you don't want to hear that. And I know it it's sounds scary. scary and it's intimidating. but the thing is, is that you're worth that time. Mm. So why not do it? Mm-hmm. Because you're going to be doing all the work on all the other things. Why not fix your mind? Like, well, and it's part of the process when, you're, when you go through it, like after surgery, you're still going to be having to deal with 
the mindset. You're still going to be having to deal with past memories and your addiction to food or whatever else is rolling around in your head. Yeah. Might as well get a jump on it now Mm -hmm. before you get to surgery and then you continue those good habits and you will succeed. Yeah, you will. You will. I like it. This is something. Ooh. Don't consider yourself a failure for having surgery. Oh, I like that. Because it doesn't mean you're available. Uh, available. It doesn't mean you're a failure. Okay. No, not at all. At all. It just means that you're taking control yeah. of your life and you're doing the things that your doctors have been saying. Because yes. some of us have actually been told by our doctors several times to get the surgery and we're like, no, don't think I need it. What? What's that? That might have been me. I might be calling you out. Go. <laughs> might be, it might be me. But hey, but I did true. it in my own time. But you're not the only one we've heard that from. No. Like the whole point is, is like doctors, some doctors want you to be healthy. And so that's why they bring it up. They want you to live a healthy, full, happy life. Yes, they do. And when you're overweight and you're tired and your health is going to shit and all those other things, they just want you to be happy. So that's really what they're there for. That's yeah. what they're trying to do. Like mm-hmm. doctors really just want their patients to be happy and healthy. Most. Most. I mean, the the, the majority, right? The majority of doctors. We hope. We hope. Yes. I mean, that's what they're selling. <laughs> Yeah. So nobody is a failure. No, you're not. You're just adding another tool to your tool belt. That's right. You're taking control. You've made the very brave decision to go through it in a very, it, it's not, I, I don't know, it's drastic because it's surgery, but then it's not drastic because it's going to save your life. It's interesting because we've been in this world so long. I don't even find surgery drastic anymore. I know. I find it like it's That's why nature. I go back and forth because I'm like. It's very hard. I have no fears of surgery. I've also never had fears of surgery. Neither have I. I just like the uh, anesthesia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, I'm just like, oh, um, I'm going to sleep. They're fixing me and I'm waking up. It's like it doesn't. Me, yeah, I'm like, bring on the anesthesia. You're yeah. so weird. Literally, You're best so sleep weird. I ever get is under anesthesia. Like, I think it's cool to be able to go to sleep and someone can fix you and wake up. And yeah, it's new. It's interesting. I love it. Yeah, I like it. Okay. So, <laughs> Kelly Gins. What's another one? How do you want to say this? So, a big part of the journey after mm-hmm. is being able to put two photos together. Side by sides? Side by sides. They, they run the bariatric world, right? Yep. Okay. So, in order for you to be able to do that, you have to take photos. You do. You do. And you're not going to like them. You're not going to want to post didn't. them. Mm-hmm. You're going to you're going to be like, nope, <laughs> no, nope. I want to hide behind this person. Don't hide. Don't hide behind anybody. Put yourself out there. Get the damn photos taken. And take your damn measurements so that you have data for when you feel like you're not making enough progress. You can put those two little photos together. And see your progress. Yes. I would even say, so for the shy ones, because like me, I don't want to do these things. She's not shy anymore. I, I know no. where she's going and she is not shy. Correct. Not. Yeah. Do you know where I'm going? I do know where you're going Let's with see. this. Let's see if you're correct. So I'm always those right. people, <laughs> Just the saying. people that are like me in the beginning, that was very, very nervous for this. I highly recommend just take maybe even an hour. You go through, you stand in front of a camera. And you take long photos and then you push video and you do around photos and videos like that. And then you literally take a measurement and then do that. Just do this once. At least do this once. Mm -hmm. Because I promise you in the future and I'm going to call you out, Hot Rob. We know his photo that he uses every time. And you know what? He might have only had that one, but at least he has it. And it proves to him Mm -hmm. all the time that he has done the work that he Mm -hmm. has lost the weight that he has put in all this effort and it Mm -hmm. means fucking something so i highly recommend it even if it's only 10 15 minutes and you do this for yourself get the fucking measurements do the video i admit i'm really mad at myself that i don't have any video of me 
There's like real, unless Kelly has something hidden somewhere, I never physically got any video of myself. Because this is before live photos, people. And yeah, yeah no I don't really have any video content mm-hmm. of myself. It's so, all photos. Right. I miss the video ones. I'm so pissed at myself for the workouts. I was doing two a days and there's barely any record of it. I mean, just me telling you and it, it fucking happened, but there's nothing. Yeah. There's like nothing. I found like a few photos and it's like, oh, I'm so fucking pissed about it because Mm -hmm. there are some really I did hip hop classes. I did kickboxing classes. I did yoga and Pilates. I did cycling. I have nothing. Nothing. Wow. (laughs) Reel it in, girl. So reel it in. If you don't. The audience did not do that to you. (laughs) I know I did it to myself. But that's how angry you might get when you're at year seven or eight like I am. Mm -hmm. And you're like. Man, if I just took the time, Mm -hmm. the five, 10 minutes it takes, it's not long. Mm -hmm. Get out of your head if you're like, oh, this is going to be forever. No, it doesn't take forever. (laughs) Well, no, it's not like I feel like it's just avoidance. It is avoidance. It's an avoidance type of thing. You don't want to take them. I feel you on it. Yeah, we get it. Like when I took my pre photos. Mm hmm. And my belly was hanging out and I I, like I didn't enjoy that shit. And I wanted to cover up my stomach as soon as I did it. Yeah. But I am so grateful now that I took all those photos. Yes. And I took all of them as my journey progressed. Mm -hmm. So now I get to look back on that and be like, damn, I killed it. You did it. You fucking did did it. it. I fucking did it. That's right. So definitely do not shy away from video Mm -hmm. photos Mm -hmm. or taking those measurements because the measurements like you may be like, whatever, I can tell by my my jeans or my clothes. Right. Which you can. You can. But it's really like, I mean, I lost like 70 some odd inches. Yeah. When you hear those numbers, you're like, actually, let me look. You can pull it up. Yeah. I was thinking I was like, oh, I think I could pull it up because these are the numbers I wish that I had. Mm -hmm. Because especially on those like hard days when you're feeling big, Mm -hmm. like literally two days ago, I felt so fat. I don't know why, but I just like I felt it in my arms. I felt it in my legs. I just felt like inflated. I was right. 74 inches. Holy shit. Yep. Holy shit. Yep. So that's how much I lost over that period of time. And I I measured myself once a month. Yeah. Like I had once a month, I would take new photos and I would measure myself. It was just on the schedule. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's the one of the best things I did was I didn't shy away from doing those mm-hmm. things. 100 percent. Because I know how like I am one of those people that I bury my head in the sand, brush it under the rug, whatever I need to do to not actually realize that I have gained weight. And if I weigh myself or measure myself, I all of that information is now in my head. Yeah. And I know where I'm at. So I shy away from that, too. But just do it. You won't regret it. I just and every single person I'll ask, they'll be like, I regret not taking more photos. Yeah. Every single time. You heard me just scream about it. (laughs) Yeah. Like they never regret the surgery. They regret not taking more photos. And they always regret not doing the surgery sooner. Yeah, that's too. That too. Except for me. I don't regret it. No. I don't. I think I did it in the way that worked best for me. I think me me. too. Yeah. I don't regret when. Like it would have been cool for us to go through it together, obviously, but we were in two different places. Yes. Like with our lives. And I think it's better the fact that I am a little bit later than you because like I could be that mentor and the role model that you Mm -hmm. needed. Like you had someone to look. Even though I taught you more than you knew. I know. You have. And that's what's cool about it. That's why you don't have to have a twinsies. Like you, you just yeah, need you someone can, to talk to. Yeah. And that's I think it is. I don't know if we would have done a podcast had we done it together at the same time. I know it could have been completely different because mm-hmm. I needed the I needed to go through the loneliness and shame and embarrassment to me have the thought of being like, we need to talk to other people. Mm. We need to get this out to someone because I, I can't be the only one. And you're not. And I'm not. You're not. I'm not. So I no, I'm ashamed. thankful. I'm yeah, I'm thankful that we that I did it when I did it. You've never felt shameful? Nope. Oh, I felt I felt shame for a I, long time. I mean, but for the moment I decided like I'm doing this, 
Like I was just like, I don't give a fuck who knows that I'm having it done. Oh, I was shameful making uh, fill out the paperwork. I was shameful fucking going to the first appointment, shameful getting the surgery, shameful for the first couple of years. I mean, I was nervous, I was but fucking, I wasn't shameful. Yeah, I didn't want to talk about it. I was ashamed of it. Yeah, I was ashamed of myself for getting too fat that I needed to have fucking surgery to help myself. But now we know. But now I know that that's. One, that it's fucking one genetic and it's just like diabetes. Once you have obesity, you will always have obesity. Mm -hmm. Like it's always a battle. It's always there. It doesn't go away anymore. Yeah. So that's another thing. Don't assume by having surgery that your obesity is just poof gone because it's not. It's not. It's, it's not. still in you. You still have to fight. You still have to work hard to keep the weight off mm -hmm. because it is always going to be something that you battle. Well, and my shame also came from all these assumptions that weren't like one, some of them weren't factual and two was just from a lot uh, of them weren't factual. Uh, a lot of people just being haters was made me feel shameful. Yeah. Cause they're just looking at me like, why do you need that? Can't you just work out more or eat less or do all those things? <clears throat> yep. Done those. Can't you just be on a diet? Done that. Can you stop drinking alcohol? Already did that. <laughs> like, do you drink soda? Nah, bitch. I only drink water and tea. Mm -hmm. Come at me. What else? Yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing. Don't let other people's, opinions on your health make a difference and we know that's hard it's so fucking hard it's hard like mel's just saying like how she made she was made to feel shameful because mm -hmm. of the the comments that people were making yep. yep but if you're taking control of your health it's your health it's your health it's not theirs they don't need to know shit man nope like if you don't want to talk about it, you don't talk about it. if you want to talk about it and blow mm -hmm. it off the rooftops like kel fucking do it yeah but you should still take care of you regardless of what anybody says. Yeah. Like, I don't you you do it however you feel comfortable, but you do mm -hmm. it because no one should dictate whether you are going to feel better. Like yeah. you do that. Yeah. Because it would really suck that like, oh, because like, say if my brother was like anti-surgery and mm -hmm. I did that, I didn't do the surgery. And then three years later, I have a heart attack and die. Mm -hmm. Like and I know a little bit would be in my brother's brain thinking, oh, she wanted to take control. Yeah. But I talked her out. But of I it. talked her out of it. So don't let people's opinions talk you out, talk you out of it, mm -mm. which goes into our other one, which is don't quit. Never. Don't quit ever. So when you decide to do the surgery, it's really hard to like fully commit to the idea of it because there is a lot of steps. There's mm -hmm. a lot of process to it. There's a lot of information that you have to do. There's a lot you have to do with insurance. But I, I mean, I'm going along with what you just said. Like, if you quit and three years later you have a heart attack and they can't operate on you, they can't do the surgery anymore. Yep. Like, how much regret would you have Seriously, for quitting? For quitting. You when can't quit. what you're doing is the bravest thing you've ever done. Yeah. And that's what you have to look at because, like, we're going to get a little heart to you. A little, a little, a little, what is it called when you give, like, a heart top? Yeah, give some hard love here. Me and Kelly have witnessed some crazy ass things. Yes. And we both witnessed my dad having a heart attack yep. in my in my in his house or apartment, whatever. And it's not fun, guys. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. it is terrifying to watch someone go through that and not knowing if they're gonna fucking mm -hmm. survive or not. And you're just hoping the ambulance gets there quick enough. And mm -hmm. you're hoping you're doing all the things that the ambulance people tell you to do before they yep. get there. Like it is not cool. So if you can help prevent that for yourself or your family and your loved ones, mm -hmm. then fucking do it and get your ego and pride out of here and just mm -hmm. help yourself. Yeah. And realize that it's not shameful. It's not, you know, it shouldn't be frowned upon. Like this is the the best thing that you can possibly do for yourself. Yeah. So take control. Yeah. Take control and just do what you need to do to get yourself healthy because there's a reason there's a why out there mm -hmm. um, is what where you're at right now. Yeah. Like there's a reason for you going to weight loss surgery. So that's another thing. Don't let go of your why. Yes. And whys change. Whys do change. Why change? Yeah, mine's have. And mine have. It's just keep them, um, you know, at the forefront. Yeah. It keeps you going. Yeah. It does. Because even, you know, I'm almost four years post-op now because my surge anniversary, I will have already happened by the time it this airs. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I will be four. I'm four years post-op. Yeah. And 
I have never let go of my why. No, you haven't. My why mm-hmm. was always I never wanted to be bedridden again. And I've held on to that. And when it started to get hard again because of my regain, I took control again mm-hmm. and I asked for help. And I think you have to hold on to that why because there's a reason why that is your why. So don't let go of it. Don't let go of it because it helps you never give up. And that's just going to mm-hmm. be the running theme. Yep. Like, yep. Keep your why, never give up. Keep your why, never give up. Fucking put it, put it on a poster in your room, yes. your bathroom, fucking kitchen, wherever. And Whatever you need put, to see it. Put it up and it will keep you going because we've known yep. people that have done that. And they're like, I see it every day. And I never and let go of I, it. And I don't let go. Yep. So. Yep. Another thing. Oh, Kelly's got another one. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like queen of that. There's so much help out there, guys. There's so much help. Like, there's so many amazing people that are in this community. And, you know, even surgeons and all sorts of people that are not even on social media. Yeah. That are amazing. Like Dr. Alexander. Like, she's not even on social media. But she's like one of the smartest fucking women I've ever met in my life. So and we've all met a lot of smart women yes. on this podcast. Yes, and she is an incredible person. And I just think there's so much help out there. And all you have to do is just ask for ask. it. You really do. And I know that it, like with, it's weird for me. It's like I will ask all the questions for anybody else. Yeah. I don't know why it's so hard for me to ask for that help. But once I do it, I always feel better. What? You don't know why. Why? You don't know why it's hard for you to ask for help. Why is it hard for why? You tell me. Your family. Oh, it's always the family. <laughs> when you ask for help, what did you get? Nothing really. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I was told, why can't you do it yourself? <laughs> You're welcome. I'll uh, send you my invoice Thanks. for the therapy Thanks, session. Kel. That's Appreciate two. it. That's two now. That's two. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. Um, so yeah, just ask for the help. Yes. It's there's and if you don't know who to go to, come to us, send us a DM, send us an email. You can email us at Kelly and Mel at our sleeplifepodcast.com and we will find you some help. Yeah. Like if you have a problem, we will figure out somebody to put it. Yeah, in front of you. We've already been like where we got notified that someone was having trouble getting a surgery and seeing a surgeon. Mm. We got to our resources, Dr. Carl Pesta. We love you. He's amazing. He's amazing. And he helped out right away. It was yeah. not even a hesitation. Yeah. So, so we just, can help you. We can help you. Don't be afraid to ask. Yes. We're you, you don't get any help if you don't ask for it. Exactly. And I put that off for a very, very long time. And then as soon as I started asking for help and doing my own research. It all came. Figured it out. Figured it all out. Whatever. You know. I think that's all of them. Uh, Let me just. Is there anything else like even that you can think of? Because I feel like the never give up and the whole. uh, You know. I'm blanking. Yeah. It's fine. So the only other thing that I would say is realize it's not a don't in front of it, but realize that there is a whole community out here for you. Mm. You're not alone. You are not alone. You will never be alone. Um, As long as you step up and ask for help or ask questions or just start talking to people like everybody is so welcoming. They are. Go to the events, go to the meetups, go Mm -hmm. to the tours, because you meet a lot of really cool fucking people Mm -hmm. out there. We really have have met so many. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. There's like me and Kel talk about all the time. Like we care about people that are across this country. Like we would go to bat for them. We would Mm -hmm. fly there and help them at any moment. Yep. And it's just like, if they were just down the street, Yeah. like it doesn't, that's how much we care and that's how much they care about us. So it's like, you need to get into this community and you need to just like throw yourself in. Mm -hmm. Don't be nervous. It's okay to be nervous. But go in and yeah. meet some people because you just never know what your life is going to change to. Because yeah. everybody we meet, we're like, my life has changed so much for the better. Well, I mean, you our know? our copywriter we met because we had surgery and we started this podcast. Yeah. 
our two admins, Tanya and Katie, would have never, never known would them. have known them had we not. And they live in Oregon. They live in Oregon. We see them all the time. Yep. Like we literally just had Easter breakfast with them. I know they're so fun. We love um, you. And then you know we've met some really amazing people. You know, Dad Rob, Hot Rob, Lizzie, um, Crystal. We've got Jamie. We've got so many people. Like it's it's hard to list everybody I know, because it's like and 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 yeah, because because they're just amazing people and they just want to be there and help you. And they're genuine. They really want to help people. So yeah. like that's why I keep saying go out to the things that are near you. Yep. Because community is actually key, I think, to a successful journey too. Because yes, you gotta have community. You have to have people around you that support you and understand what you're doing and actually mm-hmm. like encourage you to do more. Because mm-hmm. this journey is not stagnant. Well, and so. if you're feeling like you don't really want to jump into social media, it's just not kind of not your thing. Um, there is the tribe membership. Yes. The Sleeve Dietitian. Yes. She runs it. It is a fabulous program. Um, it there are support groups every day. I think last she told us there was 40. Yeah, 40. 40 support groups in a month. They're constantly doing challenges. There's like a running feed. So it's like social media, but you don't have to post pictures or anything like you can. You can just ask questions. You can just ask questions. You can just read through it. We have our winner's bench Mm -hmm. support group, the Benchies. Um, People love being in there because you don't have to post anything. You can purely just read what other people post. I call them lurkers, but we love you lurkers. We do love the lurkers. Um, We love all of our Benchies. So there's different ways of finding support without necessarily having to put yourself out as far as social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Like, don't close your mind off to the different avenues that you can take for support. Not at all. So. All right, guys. All right. I think that's everything. This was fun. Let us know if there's anything that you guys think of. That's right. And don't forget to go to Mm jbyawards.com. Definitely get your tickets. The voting starts August 1st. And we want to see all your faces fucking there. Yes, we would love to meet every single one of you because we love every single one of you. Yeah. And if you just want like fun, like a newsletter from us, a merch, just go to our sleep life podcast. A free ebook. A free ebook is our sleep life podcast.com. Yep. And sign up for our newsletter because they actually get to know when the tickets go on sale early. Mm -hmm. They get to know what's coming up on tours. Like they Mm -hmm. get to know all the things before everybody else does. Yes. Yes. And that's how you get your ebook. Sign up for the newsletter. It automatically sends it to you. And then you get our little free ebook, which is fabulous. It's fun. It's fun. So, okay. all right. We love you guys. And we will see you next time.